Hello friends, Nature's Profit is broken right now as a support. You don't need to look at his win rate. I know it's not that convincing, but I promise he is a bit of a tricky hero to play and many people don't do it correctly and they grief intentionally or unintentionally, I don't know, but they do and they lower the win rate after you watch this video. You will know how to do it correctly and win games with this hero who is pretty much 100% picked or banned in the Immortal Bracket. When Nature's Prophet first became a support, it's because Sprout received a buff to do damage. This was catching everyone off guard, doing tons of damage, but people have wisened up and they start to buy Quelling Blades. It's pretty annoying for them to spend 100 gold on a Quelling Blade, but it's pretty much a requirement if Nature's Prophet is in the game, even if he's not in your lane because he's going to pick up Teleport and be able to show up in your lane and sprout you, and if you don't want to deal with that, you need a Quelling Blade. Now, there was another nerf that Tangos work on Sprout now, so that helps, but it might mean they are forced to use a Tango they don't want to, so they gotta start with a Quelling Blade. They don't know that we have moved on to not starting with Sprout, because at some point, you are going to get it, they have to start with the Quelling Blade. But now what people are doing is actually starting with Teleport at level 1. This allows you to teleport out as soon as the game begins to wherever you want to place a ward. Frequently, you teleport to the mid lane, place a ward there, and then walk over to place a second ward potentially, or block camps, something like that. You can also just go back to your team after placing that initial ward. This way, the enemy team is not sure where you placed your wards, though they might guess where a Nature's Prophet could place them. They are likely to walk through your wards, allowing you to scout out their beginning getting items and potentially where they place their own wards, letting you get a very quick D ward before the game even really begins, getting you some extra gold and hurting their vision. Because you'll have teleportation at level one, this lets you stay with your team for the bounty rune fights and even walk away from your actual lane to harass the enemy heroes for a little bit before teleporting right into your lanes that you show up just in time for the creeps. You haven't missed a single thing and you've already annoyed multiple lanes. But wait, there's more. You'll even get bonus damage as you teleport back into the lane. So now you're going to have 36 extra damage on your first attack that is then going to drop to 30 damage then 24 damage you get the idea every attack you use one stack so the damage is going down but you're getting bonus damage to start off the lane with some strong attacks if they fight you back guess what every time you use one stack you gain one armor so you're going to start with 36 damage zero armor go down to 30 damage one armor and then you know just repeat that so as they try to trade back, you're doing extra damage and taking less damage than usual. Or you can do something else that is pretty funny, which is that if no one dies at the bounty rune fights or potentially no one with a stun dies at the bounty rune fights, you can teleport directly into the enemy fountain or in front of the enemy fountain, not into the fountain, that's griefing. Out of the enemy fountain right at the front where people have put their couriers and the couriers are going to walk through as they deliver those first items people have bought with bounty gold. You can kill off these couriers and then teleport to your lane with the teleport scroll. Downside to this is that now that ranged heroes are required to hit twice, you will frequently miss some of the couriers if there are too many leaving at the same time, especially because they are going to be immune as long as they have the fountain buff. So you actually have to wait a little bit for them to move out. There is a sweet spot for this trick, which is when you reach a high enough level that people consistently put couriers outside their fountain to min-max efficiency, but they are not so high level that they realize, hey, there's a nature's profit in this game, I shouldn't do this. So I recommend before you commit to this trick too much, go check a couple of your replays and jump to uh, the start of the game, go watch the couriers at the, the enemy team and see what people do. If in a lot of your games, people immediately call out couriers as the, the bounty rune gold happens or they are putting couriers outside of their fountain, you can consider this trick. It's pretty funny. Uh, but if people aren't doing it, then it's not really worth it. You're gonna teleport there and not get anything and then have to use a town portal scroll for nothing. That's the new age teleportation tech people are using lately from there. It kind of goes back to the old NP support that you might be familiar with. People are getting better about dealing with Sprout, but I'll give you a couple tricks in a moment on how to still wreck people with this ability, which you will max first in most cases, because even if you can't use it on enemies for the full duration, you can use this once max out 448 AOE damage to farm creep waves or jungle camps very effectively with uh, you, you're not going to farm too hard, guys. You still want to, you know, be active, but there's going to be time to farm, and this ability will help you do that. If it is a very gank-heavy game, you can max teleport first, something like this, and then go back for max sprout. That would be fine as well. You're going to take your ultimate every chance you get. It is really good if you use it correctly. It is the number one way to grief with this hero by using this ultimate incorrectly, and that is to use it to farm. The other way to use it incorrectly is to use it on your target rather than somewhere else on the map and allowing it to bounce over to accumulate damage to then get a bigger hit on the target you actually want to hit, but that's like 
that's more of a minor mistake compared to griefing by farming with this ultimate when you are a support. I made an entire video about it. If you want to check that out later, then I will link it in the description. But you, as a support, mainly only want to use this ability anytime a gank or a fight is happening. Then you will use your ultimate somewhere else to contribute damage to those kills. You will not use it to farm creeps. After everything else is maxed, you get Nature's Call. You can get one point in an earlier, maybe instead of like your second point in teleport. If you think like there's a Monkey King, you want to try to break his trees, that kind of hero, then go ahead. But otherwise, getting it afterwards is fine. Now, some people ask, should you get stats instead of Nature's Call? You can if you're playing a very aggressive right-clicking type of build, but I don't think it's worth it in pubs to skip out on Nature's Call because there's often a lot of inefficiency in terms of map movement in pub games. And so by getting points in Nature's Call, you can use it to split push, you can use them to scout the map, you can use them to deny runes, right? There's all sorts of stuff you can do with the Nature's Call. I think it is absolutely worth getting uh, the four points in it. If you want just like one point, then fine. But I personally, I always max this out at the end here. Talent wise, this is pretty much the standard for the first two levels, Wrath of Nature, base damage will add 152 to the last hit over the course of those 18 hits. It's a total of about 1300 damage, which is a lot, but it is spread out over the 18 units. It is still the norm to pick up uh, for 15 teleportation stacks because of the way this scales, because you start at a high number and then go down by six damage every time. The, the max teleportation without the talent is about 468 damage by about, I mean, literally exactly 468 damage that is then affected by armor. And every time you attack, it's going down. When you take this talent, the four extra stacks leads to 816 extra damage. That is a ton. So especially if you are like building any form of right click item, and even if you aren't, this is a very good talent, but I like this talent and I actually, I'm going to explore this town a little bit more as well, because I think in many pub games, there is not good map control. Many people are bad about pushing out the lanes, especially maybe in the lower ranks that you might be experiencing and you're trying to solo carry games with nature's profit support. Ratting with the treants is a great way to do that. So if you want to try this out, if you uh, find your games uh, fit something that I just described, I would go ahead and grab points in nature's call and then either at level 15, take the treant, uh, plus five treant summon talent. And then at level 16, take this one. Or do it like this, where at, uh, after three points in Nature's Call, you get the Nature's Call cooldown and five Treant Summon. This means that after you have Nature's Call maxed out, every 23 seconds, you can summon 10 Treants to split push a lane, to scout out. I, I can give you micro tricks in a different video guide as well, to split up your Treants all across the map to find the enemy heroes, to find the right target, to avoid the wrong fights. You can use it to scout Roshan, deny runes, block enemy camp, stuff like that, right? I think this is really good in pub games where people are terrible at dealing with that stuff. But if you just want to do damage, then these left talents are, are completely fine and a ton of people take them. Sprout leashes will cancel teleports and prevent general mobility spells. But if they have heroes that aren't really all that mobile, you have a ton of stuns on your team, and instead they just stand and fight with right clicks a lot, heroes like Terrorblade or Drow, you might want to try this left talent so that you can give them 100% miss chance. If they have BKB or like MKB, stuff like that, then they will negate this a little bit, but they won't always have those, and that is when this talent can be good. At level 25, I would always take the teleport cooldown. It is just way too good to move around the map. And every time you use it, you refresh all your stacks. So it is a very powerful talent, far better than the Treant HP damage talent, in my opinion. Even if you've taken these talents, I would still not take this one. I would take this talent. Item wise, if you're starting with those teleportation tricks I mentioned, grab both observers for your team and at least one century, if not two, because if you're placing these observers, you're likely to see where the enemies are placing it. You can get some free D wards for yourself. Don't leave that for your other support. I want the gold. So start with these and you're almost for sure going to get good wards for your team and possibly some D wards as well. If not, you can use it to block camps if you choose. Uh, and besides that, just general stat right click items for your laning stage. That's mainly what you're going to do to contribute. Blood Grenade can be very nice to go for a kill as well. Blightstone is not popular to start with anymore because Medallion has been removed from the game. But if your lane has a ton of physical damage, you will occasionally still see it. Uh, if you want a magic stick, that's fine. Just work out, like remove the circlet, maybe a sentry, stuff like that to get a magic stick. Early game items, you can potentially skip these. You will go back for them eventually, but Nature's Prophet has so much farm potential and mobility because of his teleport that he doesn't need the movement speed as much as other heroes who want to show up at different parts. They gotta walk there. That's for chumps. Nature's Prophet teleports. So you can skip them to start if there's an item you want to rush. Mainly the Spirit Vessel. 
I have this under core items, but it's really just the default you can go for if you're not sure and it will be safe in most games, but you don't have to go these items, you might go for something else. However, if you are going for a spirit vessel and you do need it against like a Huskar, Morphling, those types of heroes, you need it as fast as possible. So you will actually see Nature's Prophet just go from these starting items, build an urn with a circlet, and sometimes they'll get boots after that, but very frequently they'll just go straight for the spirit vessel, and then after the spirit vessel they will go back for like the boots and then the magic wand. They, they will usually buy like a magic stick earlier if they need it, like either before the urn or after the urn they'll buy the magic stick and just not upgrade it. Um, uh, but yeah, you can skip a ton of the early game items that other people need to get for a core item like Spirit Vessel potentially, or an Orchid is another one that you might rush because the silence, the sooner that comes online, it's really good. Most other items I'd say you don't have to rush and you can just get boots first. I have seen a right click oriented build where people are getting a couple Wraith Bands to start with their, their early gold and then going for like an Orchid or a Mage Slayer. I would say you do that build if you are mainly going to go for right clicks, and I would definitely take the right click talents, the teleportation damage, stuff like that, if you're going for this build. But for you guys, if you're not sure, you're trying out natures for the first time, I would say go for the spirit vessel. In fact, you don't even have to skip these if you're uncomfortable with that, like the first time playing this hero. But I do think rushing the spirit vessel, then going back for the boots and all of this. Shard is a great follow up. It is just so much magic damage between Sprout spirit vessel and shard when they are near trees which your sprout does count as trees so even if they're not near trees you'll at least get the eight sprout trees to work it is such a good item it is also very good against anyone who likes to hide in the trees like hoodwink treant protector uh like flying heroes like wyvern night stalker who like run through the trees you lose sight of them shard is a great way to keep sight of those heroes if you don't need spirit vessel or you're looking for items to build after that Aghanims is very great to build when you need lockdown for your team. The root on just like everyone it hits is fantastic and will help you maximize on your ratting potential as you have split pushed with your teleportation, with your treants, all that stuff. Someone goes to rotate over there to deal with it and then they want to like teleport back into the fight that their team has just engaged in. If you see that happening, you can ult them and cancel it with a root. That'll catch a lot of people off guard and you'll pretty much win the fight because it is like five versus four because you stop their teleport. Solar Crest is a lot less popular since it got nerfed, but you can build it if you think your teammates will make great use of it. Uh, something like Mage Slayer is a little bit more aggressive. You won't see that as much as like Spirit Vessel Ag, stuff like that, but it can be good. Uh, Nature's Prophet just has very flexible itemization. So if you think, hey, my team needs this item, I think I can build that item, go ahead. It, it's literally that simple. Whatever your team needs, whatever you think, I need damage, I need lockdown, I need auras, you can build it because you are going to be extremely farmed and you already contribute a bunch with your base spell. So your items are just whatever the team needs for that game. For early neutral items, you usually don't have trouble with sustain because you can go back to the fountain more easily than other heroes thanks to your teleportation and Sprout actually prevents like jungle camps from getting to you. So you don't take damage while farming. So often just damage items uh, through the stat items or like Duelist Glove or Spark of Cards, they're all good. I like Spark of Cards the most, um, but if you don't get it, like any of the stat items is great too. Tier two, you can usually still do some kind of like damage item like Specialist Array or Orb of Destruction for a teammate who does a lot of physical damage. If you need to go for more survivability because you're like uh, tanking more stuff and you're doing more utility builds rather than damage, that's fine too. Tier three, like any attack speed item for damage is good. Any utility like Ogre Steel Totem for an escape since you don't actually have one, that can be quite nice. If you have to split push a lot, Cloak of Flames is actually kind of cool for the the uh, AOE burn, you can like walk in into the creeps, sprout, and like you'll actually kill off quite a lot of creeps. And then you do have to get away and hide before the enemies kill you. But I kind of like it. I kind of I've explored with it, but you don't you really use it like an initiator like usual. So I wouldn't do it that much if you don't need to do all the split pushing, just like usual attack damage stuff could be very good instead. So those sprout tips I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and click enemy heroes at the start of the game, especially if you have placed wards down already, and find the heroes that don't have a Quelling Blade. Those are going to be your primary target. So in the laning stage, if one hero does not have it, then go ahead and sprout them and just harass because it's the same as it used to be. Oh, well, they have tangos then make them use their tangos. It may not be optimal for them to tango at that time. For example, they may already be full health or they may already have a tango going. So for example, if you see an enemy hero who doesn't have a Quelling Blade and instead is depending on their tangos and you see them happen to heal up because they're, they're already low from your harass, 
go ahead and sprout them because now they have to use another tango and it's going to be inefficient for them or they just have to sit there and take the full sprout damage. Another thing you can do is to wait for the enemy heroes to be near trees that they can't pass through, uh, terrain like cliffs, a bunch of creeps or enemy heroes because then when you sprout them, they will have their quelling blade but they'll sometimes get stuck in there even after cutting a tree. Now it looks silly like when we're gonna do it here because we have all the time in the world but I promise you, People panic when they get sprouted. They try to cut a tree as quickly as they can, and they cut the wrong tree. For example, they might cut this tree, and then you see he actually can't get out because this tree, the, I don't know, guys, the collision is weird, and it looks like he should be able to get out, but he will actually be stuck in there even though he has cut a tree. So that is a great time to use sprout when they happen to be near trees or when they're in the creep wave kind of like this, especially when your creeps are chasing them because they have, like, aggro on them or something. Like if Pudge walks up to here, now we could sprout him if he, especially if he drew aggro, because when he tries to cut this tree, this creep might have gotten in his way. He didn't in this time, the tree, the creep's not helping me, but you get the idea. Sometimes when there's tons of creeps, they will body block the entrance and the heroes will be stuck in there for the whole time, or at least it'll take them longer to get out. Another thing you can look to do is instead of sprouting a hero where they could immediately cut a tree and then continue running, this might actually grief your team, especially if you have teammates chasing behind who may not have quelling blades themselves and suddenly they can't pass your sprout while Pudge has already ran free. What you can look to do instead if you are in position and you have the cast range is sprout ahead of the hero so it actually blocks their path and they have to walk around. You can then even try to like body block them further as you have redirected their path but if they want to go directly through they're gonna have to cut two trees and the cooldown on Quelling Blade is going to prevent that so unless they have tangos and they're willing to do that they have to move around your tree. In this case yes he can just go around and he might still escape but other times it will block their path a lot more for example maybe they're trying to go through here and you can completely block off their path and they have to take an entirely new path uh, that can be very good it just depends where on the map you are or you can try to hold your sprout so that uh, they like get close to close to a tree line like this you can either block him in front or if you do have to cast it on the pudge you might get into that situation we talked about earlier where he cuts the tree and he is still blocked just because of like the collision of the trees by the way even when you destroy all the trees and sprout the area will still do damage this is particularly useful when you are split pushing waves or jungling camps you can sprout uh, the creeps you're farming and then summon the treants if you need to and you'll still get the the DPS you don't have to like wait for it to die or anything the animation for teleportation is only visible to enemies who actually have vision of that area so for example when we use teleport on this enemy natures it doesn't show if you use it over here we can't see that so when you're ganking side lanes try to teleport into the trees where the enemy can't see you and then they won't they won't know you're coming at all you just pop out suddenly with all the max stacks sprout them stuff like like that but you can also use this to mess with the enemies and fake ganks especially if you you don't really mean to you're like just tell your team hey I'm just I'm just scaring them don't bait your team right but you can actually start the teleport and if they don't want to get caught off guard and sprouted they actually have to like run away from that and then you just cancel it because it doesn't cost you anything until you actually finish the teleportation it doesn't put it on cooldown it doesn't use any mana so you can just like fake it all the time you can pretend you're going for runes uh, the wisdom runes teleport in freak the enemy out stuff like that and then just cancel it for laughs but be careful of this when a team fight happens. You actually need to show up to the team fight. You can't be like fake canceling the whole time. So this is one of the hard parts about playing Nature's Prophet. You do have to quickly analyze a fight and figure out here's where I want to teleport. Because if you start going and then you're like, oh wait, actually this is a bad spot. Then okay, I'm gonna go here. Oh wait, no, that's bad too, right? You are just delaying the time it takes to show up to the fight and the channel time is, you know, it's pretty decent. It's not like an instant teleport. So try to figure out the best spot for you in a fight quickly. Show up and then just like be there at the fight. Don't keep canceling your teleport and like faking it out in the fight and never actually showing up. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a bunch of different micro tricks you can use with the treants to like scatter them around to scout for you. I don't want to go over it too much here because I covered it in a micro guide, but I will link that in the description. Every bounce of Wrath of Nature will increase the damage. So instead of using it on your target, try to cast it somewhere else and let it bounce over to your actual target. You can also cast this ability through the minimap. So if you're trying to hit the top lane, you can cast it in the bottom part of the map, let it bounce through everything and then hope hopefully hit the top part. But you have to be a little bit aware of how many jungle camps are showing because if there's more than 18 visible enemy units on the map uh, and neutral creeps count as like the enemy units it can bounce to, then you may never actually reach your target. So in that case, do try to cast it a little closer to your actual target. Uh, but many times, it, as long as you don't have too many wards in the jungle, you can just cast it like in the middle of the map and it'll make its way over or something like that.
Curse of the Old Grove will do damage per tree near the enemy target within the 250 radius. So this is what that 250 radius looks like when you are standing near this dummy target. You're probably affected by about four to five trees here. So I just wanted to show you a visualization of when there is a fight like in one of the side lanes and you sprout the enemy and then use Curse of the Old Grove without even attacking, without using Wrath of Nature, Spirit Vessel, all that stuff. You can do so much damage because Sprout counts towards the Curse of the Old Grove damage and as like however many trees they happen to be in will also do damage. So you see this guy took like 1300 damage. You can have this at like 15 minutes into the game if you're having a good game. Uh, like plus the Spirit Vessel as well. That's why if you go Spirit Vessel, I think Curse of the Old Grove is such a great follow-up because you just like teleport into a gank, you sprout your target, you Curse the Old Grove, you use your Spirit Vessel on them. I don't have it here, but you get the idea. You're gonna do tons of damage. Draft-wise, you don't really have to worry about about all that much you will just first phase pick him and in fact that is a requirement uh, if you want to play this hero because everyone is trying to play it he is going to be banned double picked and then banned or you will luck out and you will be the only one to pick him so you pretty much have to just pick him you don't care who's in the game you just gotta go for it and it will be okay because he is just that good and just that versatile uh, I, that probably depends on your bracket, but in Immortal Plus, it's pretty much 100% of games are picked or banned. I am part of the problem. I will say, though, if you want to ban a couple heroes against the enemy team, I would recommend Spirit Breaker and Nyx Assassin, wherever the heck he is. These two heroes are really good at the like anti-split push, which Nature Prophet really benefits from. He will you know, charge you, and then you think you're safe, but he'll still get to you. Nyx is just like running around invis, waiting to find you on your own, and then he'll just burst kill you. And it's it's not much fun. If they're on your team, that's actually quite nice because you can teleport in. And so for your own team, you love anyone who is aggressive, anyone who will set up for you because that allows you to farm in like the corner of your own map where your team doesn't want to be. You just watch them initiate and then you start your teleport, you throw out your ult, all of that. So you like aggressive people on your team. You don't like a bunch of heavy farmers, uh, especially heroes like Naga, Alchemist, like multiple types of those heroes on your team means that there's not much farm for you. And then you want to play aggressive but they don't really play aggressive. That's actually just a bad draft, period. But that is when Nature's Prophet is going to feel pretty awkward, when you just don't have anyone who's going to do anything. And if you also have a, a lot of global heroes on your team, like Spectre and Dawnbreaker, who also want to do the same thing you're doing, which is to farm parts of the map that your team can't go to, then that also ends up being a little awkward. Final three tips to succeed with this hero. First, learn to harass in the lane without drawing creep aggro too much. If it happens every now and then, it is what it is. Is, but this is really all you do. You don't have spells that harass. You are just going to right click. And I know Sprout technically a bit, but it's really like you trap them so you can right click. You still need to identify the best times to harass when it is a good time to trap them and fight stuff like that. So it's really about learning to identify that and getting good at it. And that will actually carry over to other heroes you play as well. Second, work on that map awareness. A big part of this hero is to keep an eye on the mini map, especially in that landing stage, and just show up to fights that no one expects you to be at. Most games don't have this kind of early global rotation, so they think, yeah, we can do this, and then you just pop up, you turn it into a three versus two, you get some early kills. It's a huge part of this hero, and if you aren't even able to see these opportunities, then you can't use teleportation to its full effectiveness. And third, learn to understand where your team wants to farm and where they want to play so that you don't also go there and farm. You want to be able to use this global teleport to its full efficiency. Walk to somewhere your team Team doesn't want you to be at or maybe use the town portal scroll depending on the situation and deal with that for your team because you can always teleport back in. I hope you guys are getting this idea of what Nature's Prophet does. He maximizes your team's ability to farm out the map while still showing up to every single fight and he's hopefully bringing a lot of powerful items because he is getting all this gold and XP from farming. Thank you for watching. Leave any questions you have down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, I will also try to upload an example game where I talk through my decision making, all of that. Uh, if you're interested in that, keep an eye out for it. Uh, but if you're desperate to see a gameplay example now, uh, you can check my VOD channel. There are a lot of examples of me playing this hero because I love this guy. All right, that is all. Thank you. Bye. Go pick this hero before it gets nerfed or you're going to be sad you missed out.